have made the progress we have made as a country because our citizens have entrusted successive governments to work for them and the common interest. There are working families who are afraid of what lies ahead. You guys are no great advocates of freedom of speech at all. Uh -huh. And I shudder to think of the day when you would ever be an authority. You're a disgrace! Uh, you. You're only in the bottom of the barrel now! To make it even worse, Stop us, you say you, you care about first-time buyers. Housing prices, health reform, and rising to this climate challenge. Hello there and welcome back to Daw Talks. I'm Louise Byrne, political correspondent with the Irish Mirror and today I'm joined by political editor Fergal Blaney and our Hello. showbiz editor Sandra Mallon. Hi guys. Hi. How's it going folks? Now you might think as a politics podcast we're going to be discussing the ins and outs of legislation, of new laws, of rows in the Daw Chamber but once again showbiz dominated Leinster House this week. It was all about Ryan Tuberty, all about RTE and I suppose the big thing really was was the man himself, the man at the middle of the scandal, Ryan Tuberty, was in Leinster House for seven hours yesterday for of Daw Committee's um, quiz by TDs and Senators for a very long, long day. He looked fairly jaded coming out of it but um, Sandra, you're obviously the expert here. What did you think of Ryan Tuberty? What did you think of his answers? How do you think he did overall during those committees yesterday? I thought he was um, honest and I thought he was like I'm not going to join there is a little bit of a witch hunt I felt over the last few days and especially yesterday I think he came out much better um, than possibly maybe Noel Kelly with his information with his answers I thought that he really was trying to be um, he was trying to answer all the questions as honestly as he could you could see elements of frustration in him with some of the questions that he was being asked by certain politicians because he you know at, at one point you're kind of going around in circles um because the question the same question is asked several different times in the hope that he gives a different answer um but i did think he was on it felt like he was on trial um and i but like he looked tired um but it wasn't like our normal showbiz circle where we would go to RTE or we would go to some place where we'd have to interview him where we're promoting some program or plugging a campaign. This was an entirely serious, serious day for Ryan yesterday. And um, I felt that um, he was, uh, he really, he, he answered all the questions as I, I felt as honest, honest, honestly as he could um, yesterday. I think that is a real issue though of politicians coming in and repeating questions and I think sometimes it is trying to get more answers out of the witnesses but oftentimes it's also to get their little clip for social media and to be the one that asked x y and z question and I think it was actually really beginning to annoy both Ryan and Noel Kelly at one point um, and I think at one point Noel Kelly was like listen I'm actually just really tired now at this stage. And yeah that he even said it didn't he Louise? Yeah. I actually think sometimes when people ask the same question over and over again they expect to get some sort of a different answer in order to, to try and catch Ryan and Noel out um, and I think that was that can be a method as well apart from you know wanting to, to use that kind of like that platform of look at me I, I asked this really important question but asking the same question over and over again expecting to catch them out I think that was a bit of a game as well. well Sandra, Sandra, if they actually answered the flaming questions, they mightn't have to be asked them over and over again. But because I think Ryan actually were ridiculous. But I think Ryan actually did answer the question to the best of his abilities. Ryan is not a finance guy. He's not a numbers guy. What he did was he trusted his accountant and he trusted his agent to be able to do the normal draw up the contracts, get me the best deal possible. No, Kelly yeah. did get him the best deal possible. Like you couldn't sit there and tell me that if somebody offered you half a million on the table with all these different incentives that you would turn it down. You just wouldn't. Okay, no, Kelly okay, did his job. Okay, well. okay. I take all that. I take all that. And I definitely don't want to join the witch hunt, as you say. But uh, you're a showbiz person. And Ryan Tuberty is a showbiz person. And I think there's no denying that he went in there yesterday. He put on a show. He had a show prepared, he had his lines prepared, and he trotted them out over and over again. And the reason we did, we got the same answers over and over again is because he was reading from a script. He had three weeks to prepare it. Uh, I, I call him the greatest showman here at this stage now. He did it himself in the Late Play Toy Show a while ago, and I think he put up a, a Hugh Jackman-like performance there yesterday. But I wasn't buying it, to be honest. 
Do you know what I mean? But then again, I wasn't the audience there. So he did. He, his, his, his performance began when he came in at the start and he started hitting the table with his hand and re-emphasizing. And he looked one by one by one at all the TDs. And his performance finished as well, ironically. He shook hands with all the TDs afterwards, one by one. I've never seen that done. That was a real showbiz move, in my opinion, as well. But he was, uh, he was doing all this for a different audience. I don't think he was doing it for the politicians there. He definitely wasn't doing it for the journalists that were there to report on it in a packed gallery. I've never seen anything like it. Showbiz did come to Leinster House yesterday. But he put on a performance for, as he said at one stage, it's like he said for my viewers and listeners, like it's not the Ryan Tuberty show yesterday. This was Dahl Aaron. This is the Public Accounts Committee. This yep. is the state spending watchdog. He's there to answer questions, not to put on a show for his loyal audience, as he calls them. Although I can guarantee you the whole million of them or so were listening. Yeah, but this was his moment to actually, and it seemed like it was his only moment to actually have a platform to talk about something. So he wasn't going to give an interview to a newspaper where, you know, due to a page layout, some certain quotes would not be included in a newspaper. This was his moment. He had hours and hours for himself to actually tell, to, to give honest, direct or honest answers or a answer as much as he could with all the questions that was being thrown at him. And that's how it became a showbiz moment, because this was his only time that he could talk. And I suppose, is that not the, sort of the point in a way? Like, I think, and that was something Ryan Tuberty said a lot, Sandra, you know, he hadn't gone to newspapers, he hadn't gone to a magazine. I'm sure you were trying, I'm sure your colleagues have been trying for weeks to get a hold of him. Is that the case? Have you been trying to no avail to get Ryan Tuberty and Noel Kelly to talk to you? Yeah, we have like, but I mean, we, the, the star doorstepped uh, Noel Kelly just the day before and uh, Noel had said, you know, we're going to talk uh, tomorrow um, in front of the doll. So, you know, Noel, they were given the opportunities to talk. I mean, Ryan was sending out the statements at the time. Um, and I just feel like yesterday was his day where he was just waiting for the last couple of weeks to then strike back. Um, and when he talked about the viewers and the listeners, for, to Ryan, I felt that the viewers and the listeners are, are, are what matters to him. And we talked about rebuilding the public's trust. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to rebuild the public's trust. So everything yesterday, I felt, was for the public. Okay, well, that was, that's not what the forum is for. The forum is to answer questions to an accounting body of the doll, of the people. We want to know, where did our money go? And we found out that there was money. He can say that there was... He can argue about the ins and outs of how much, but come on, when you hear the 75,000 euros went down as consultancy fees, and he goes in there with a the Manuel from Faulty Towers excuse of, I know nothing, I know nothing, and he looks to Noel Kelly every time. And then Noel Kelly, who's famous as one of the most, uh, not the I's and cross the T's, experts in the whole field, the agents of the stars, and he goes in there and he says, yeah, I paid an invoice across, I didn't have any name on it, I put it down as consultancy fees, I paid it to a company I've never heard of, I paid it to a UK company, there was no VAT paid on it as far as I know, he says, and then he also, he, all he has to say is, it was under instructions from RTE. Now that's just not, I can't buy that. Alan yeah, but I think, but I think so, Fergal, that's no. And I don't buy it. But I think, though, Fergal, that's Noel. That's that's uh, that's an issue that has to be taken up with Noel more so. Like you, well, it's Ryan, Ryan, Ryan name. hires it's an Ryan agent. Ryan name goes on. He's the one but who got Ryan the money. hires an agent to do though that job. If you know, what's the point in having an agent? You might as well do it all yourself. Ryan hires agents and accountants to do all that kind of job for him. That's why he constantly looked to Noel Kelly. He just yeah. gets a contract, gets called into an office. Do you want to sign this contract here for me? And he signs the contract. He reads it and signs it. But okay, he reads it. He reads it. He reads it. Well, I think yeah. Castle brought a football analogy into it yesterday. And it wasn't completely relevant. But he did say that if you're signing for a big club, you want to at least know who you're signing for. You want to know how much you're getting paid. You don't just go into and go, oh, Mr. Uber agent, uh, I'll sign here. Will you tell me afterwards? No, you don't need to know who you're playing for. You I, actually, I actually think what he said was if you have, if you're a footballer, you want to make sure you're playing for a decent club and you want to make sure that your agent is getting you a good fee. Yeah. So even with that analogy, he turned it, Ryan Tubby turned it back to Noel Kelly and was very much focusing that back to Noel Kelly. But I mean, how common is that, Sandra? Do you, like, I don't know if this is something you've come across before and I don't know if you've had many encounters with agents or anything like that, but how common would it be for the star to be completely out of the loop and for the agent to deal with everything and for their talent just to show up? I don't know. I wouldn't have any kind of dealings with knowing about contract negotiations and if they go south and, you know, what happens there or anything like that. I, you know, that kind of thing just wouldn't be discussed. The talent shows up, 
the talent does the job you know you, you talk to the agent from time to time but it's you know merely to arrange interviews or whatever else you wouldn't know the ins and outs it's confidential con the contracts are confidential yeah the word talent still used in the industry as such sandra I don't like it as a word, even Ryan Tuberty has said he doesn't like it as a word. Like he's a presenter, there's other presenters, he's called the talent. Yeah. How do you find talent, that? I think it's a very tabloid term. Yeah, very but they tabloid. use it, they use it themselves. But yeah. uh, I, I just want to touch on another point as well, is that um, there was a bit of a, it's another show this phrase, I can't resist it, from Father <laughs> Ted. Kind of the, the impression was the money was resting in my account. And I'm saying that about the controversial 75,000 euro payments that, well, first of all, they had no idea they said they were coming from RTE because they came through this magic Astus account in the UK. And then all of a sudden yesterday they say, oh, we'll pay it back. The money's only resting in our account until we do these gigs from Renault. So like who takes money for services they don't do? And then possibly two years later say, oh, we'll give them back. We'll do the job for you now. So I'm not sure if, if many people will like that money resting in my account excuse that he seems to have come up with yesterday. Yeah. And I mean, he did say that he'll give that money back if he doesn't do the engagement. Oh, did Father Ted? Father Ted, when he was caught, said he'd leave it back as well. But how likely do you think, Sandra, that the desire is going to be for him to actually do those engagements? Do you think that there's people want to see Ryan Tuberty? Do you think if he was to turn up in a Renault garage in the morning that people would go like, what? I can't see him. No, I can't see him. Is? No, I can't see him doing those engagements. But um, I think he put it out there that he would give the money back. I, I just can't see him doing it. From talking to a few people today, I talked to one high profiled uh, broadcaster there today who just said um, that he actually just cannot see Ryan even walking back into RTE. I know Ryan yesterday pleaded that he just wants to go back to the job that he loves but ultimately the new director general kevin backers had told us on monday he's actually going to have a word with the staff because it's the staff that has to work with ryan do they want him back um but this particular uh broadcaster had told me today that it's just it's unlikely that he could see him come back um and i don't think with regards to those Renault gigs i i can't see him fulfilling that th those six gigs at all i mean can you no, I think it's very unlikely. And I think the public opinion has turned a little bit. I think, you know, that people seem to be a little bit more Team Ryan today than they were perhaps before all this kicked off. But I mean, I've also been speaking to people in RTE today and they're just as confused as ever about yeah. what's going on. And they don't know if they also don't know if it's possible for him to come back. And they were kind of making the point to me, like, even though Kevin Backhurst is there, you know, is he going to come in and say, oh, well, the producer on not just Ryan show but on a range of shows across the station tv radio and um, kevin backer is he, is he going to say well i'm going to double your wage because you know you're barely making a living while also paying the likes of ryan tuberty and playing the likes of all the other top talent as they're referred to so often so they were saying to me that they think it's going to be very hard for ryan to come back to radio but i i don't know what the appetite's going to be there he kept saying during the committee meetings that friday he could be out of a job by friday what are you hearing on that one sandra no kevin i mean during it was funny actually we all found out that ryan wouldn't be out of a job by friday before ryan even knew that he wouldn't be out of a job by friday mm -hmm. the move the the sentence and it kind of it probably can be a little bit of a clever move the sentence that ryan said three times during yesterday's meetings uh prompted um kevin backers to go on various radio stations yesterday and actually just defend and say i'm not making any decision i think it's till the end of the month um until he starts talking to staff but listen everyone likes a showbiz comeback we could name so many names on this right now that have done so many wrongdoings over the years and they have made a fantastic showbiz comeback yeah, well, this will be the biggest comeback since Elvis, for God's sake. But no, he, he could still come back. But in the meantime, I we'll, think we'll we could name a few political show. scandals where they have bounced back, no problem. They have. And sometimes people like a rogue in Irish politics as well. So people like a rogue in Irish this. broadcasting as well. Yeah, we do. And they keep coming back and we keep voting for them. We keep voting for them with advertising <laughs> revenues and all that. But uh, just one thing I was thinking as well, Sandra, and you're a special guest here today. So we want to milk as much showbiz out of you as we can before we leave. <laughs> Uh, the Late Late's coming back in September. Uh, yeah. We know it's not going to have Ryan Tuberty, but can you give us a sneak preview of how you think Patrick Keelty is going to get on? He'll be well, in the fresh air, won't he? Yeah, he will be, definitely. Like, I think with his comical background, um, 
Will he open the show with maybe a joke to, I mean, by the time the Late Late comes back, it's usually due back around September, I, maybe 4th, 5th, 6th, something like that. There's been no date confirmed with it. He's only going to be doing 30 weeks, which actually shortens the Late Late show this year. Um, so I don't know whether he's starting late or ending late. Uh, so we'll see how he opens it. A lot of time will have passed by the time he starts back on the late late by the time he starts on the late late show so would it give him the incentive to open the show with the joke referencing what's been going on for the summer um we'll have to wait and see uh but yeah i'm excited i think uh, changes of the good of the rest changing of the guard it'll be really interesting i think he's going to get great figures obviously for his first show people want to see what he's going to be like i think he's going to do wonders for it yeah. Can you imagine the panic at the moment in RTE if Ryan hadn't made the decision to step back from the Late Very Late Show? Very true. Would, he have, would, would he have been forced to step down from the Late Late Show if this came to light and he was still host? You know, you have to wonder like how everything was also timed. Yeah, and this was something he said a few times yesterday, Fergal. I, I know, especially during the media committee, um, you were doing the public accounts committee, I was doing the media committee yesterday. Mm. We we split it, we decided we wouldn't inflict one person to seven hours. But um during the media committee, it was said to him a few times, you know, the timing of this was really, really coincidental. And I think it was during his opening statement, Fergal, is that right? That he was like, Listen, I've actually been thinking about this for a year and he, he insists that. yeah, he insists that a decision was made in January and he was thinking about it since August. And he might have let it, let it slip to one or two people. But the facts of the matter, actually, are the dates, is that on March 16th, he had told the public, that's us, on his show. But a couple of days before that, Noel Kelly had gone into RTE management and he told them that he was stepping down. That very same week, there was about three meetings of uh, senior executives in RTE who were discussing the Deloitte um, findings and Grant Thornton, et cetera, that are going to be brought in. So it all coincidentally happened in the same week. Uh, I think when they got into the nitty gritty of it yesterday, I think that actually stands up. I think he can he can safely say that he was thinking about it. He was talking to people about it long before any of this broke. And we'll we'll give him that one, I suppose. But um, overall, uh, I, I just, I'd like, it definitely was a performance, I think. And the greatest showman, uh, he, put, he pulled off a great show for, for some people, but it wasn't everybody's taste, you know? Not everyone likes the same musicals, and uh, I don't think I liked that show yesterday. Sandra, that, I think that being said, and I was saying this to you guys, I was, I was halfway through the committee, it was about 4.30, and um, a few of us ran up to get a coffee, um, because there was a coffee break, and we were coming out of the committee room, literally in the basement of LH2000, which is kind of the newer part of Leinster House, and there's a set of double doors, and there was a senator standing there waiting for Ryan Tuberty to come out to go get his coffee and she was like listen I have a group of kids in they've heard you're in the building they really want to meet you and um, would you take a picture with them and he was kind of looking myself and another journalist were kind of walking not with him but beside him and he kind of looked at us and we were a bit like oh and he was like yeah yeah I'd love to meet him like he was quite taken aback and he was chatting away with them and um, the picture later went up on social media if you want to have a look through uh, senators uh, <laughs> to see who it was but like there is that really great appetite for him still and people hold him in really high regard and I know he was mentioning a lot of times Sandra yesterday about his name and his reputation being sullied and the analogies out of him I think he'd won like it's really hard to put a feather back in a pillow and like with my name the feather has left the pillow now do you think that's true do you think the feathers left a pillow do you think he'll be able to get his good name and his good reputation back I don't know I mean I felt he did his best um and he gave he was of course generous with his time obviously um but I like I don't know I I don't I don't know is the honest answer because it just depends on it depends on him being, you know, it depends on him being welcomed back into the RTE fold. But then, like, they're taking a risk then as well with the radio figures. Will people still want to listen in? Look, people that you, you could see on social media, people who have come across Ryan in the past um, have always said that he is polite. He's, you know, really nice person. Um, and, you know, they've never really, you, I, you don't really see people talking about how he's arrogant or anything like that. He's not. And as you would have witnessed yesterday, he stopped for kids. He would have taken pictures of politicians, the whole lot. So I, I still think there is an appetite for him. But in what capacity? I'm just wondering, like, maybe should he just take a little break out of the limelight for a little while? It might suit him because he stepped down from the Late Late Show as he cited for personal reasons. So maybe this is 
this this might in, in, encourage him to take that little break to enjoy some personal time that he has missed out on for the last 14 odd years. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. I don't know. Yeah, uh, ever the show, ever the showman who stops and he poses for pictures with kids in one of the most serious days of his life. Fair play. To like, him what is he hardly going to say? Is he hardly going to say no to, to to kids or whoever who like? Well, he's there, not, he's not that type of person. Well, if you're in his company, Fergal, you know that every five seconds that man yeah. gets stopped, and he is okay. not. But you're not allowed. You're not allowed to take photos in Leinster House either, and he probably knew that as well. Ah, uh, that rule. Really really that, that, that rule is never followed for being. Well, if you want this, well, you ask Leinster House authorities; they'll tell you otherwise. But anyway, we're going to come back to Ryan Tobody again before the end of the show. So I just want to get all our three takes on this: is has he won back? I know you said sixty forty, Louise. Has he managed to? Tilt it 60 40. Which way is that? Is that still people going against him or for him? I, I'm going to use what I used in one of our other episodes. Um, it's the mammy test. Uh, has he won back the mammies of the nation? And I'll give my own mum a little plug here. I had to give her a call last night because uh, she loves Ryan. She listens to him every morning and she was skeptical for the past few weeks. She was there, oh, it's, you know, he's, he's a lovely guy. How could he be doing that sort of things? And it looks like he did do them. So I rang last night and she wants him back on the radio. So I think he's passed the mammy's test, and that is the litmus test on this one. Uh, Louise, yourself, 60-40. Well, is that 60% of people want to back? I've now changed my answer to I'm going to go like 75-25, purely because I was downstairs earlier. I was sitting on the couch with um, a few people, a few politicians, and a group of um, older women walked past, and one of these politicians just happened to be at the media committee yesterday, and one of them stopped and went, you gave Ryan Tuberty an awful hard time yesterday. How dare you? We want Ryan back on the radio. So that's kind of swayed my opinion now. That's literally <laughs> after having in the last hour, and I was like, right, I think we're sorted. So I think people want him back. I th and, you know, I think we could add that to the mammies and grannies because the, women, the ladies who take the tours of Leinster House are not the yummy mummies of the nation, really. They're, they're more the Blue Rinse Brigade. No offence to them. but So I think he's probably won the mammies and the grannies back. And Sandra, as the showbiz expert, we'll leave the last word until we come back to it in a few minutes again. We have something else to talk about. But do you think he's, you obviously think he's won back the nation, do you? I, th I think he has, yeah. I think he has with his, as you call it, his performance yesterday. I think he has, but it, it's honestly, it is up to the RT staff as well and, and the boss himself, Mr. Backers. Yeah. Okay, we'll move swiftly on to another little thing that um, if it wasn't for Hubbardy Gate or Tubbs Gate this week, this this would have been one of the biggest stories of the week because it was when it surfaced earlier in the summer. It was about GA Go, and we had a plethora of witnesses into the into the, the bowels of Leinster House again today. That's where the committee rooms are. There, Folks, they're on two stories below ground level. There's no windows. You're either roasting or you're freezing, depending on the mood of the, the air conditioning facilities manager. You can turn up the heat or turn it down. But uh, we had RT in there. We had Sky. We had Virgin. We had independent broadcasters. And then we had all the sports federations all in the same committee. We had the IRFU, the FAI. We had uh, Sports Ireland, the Federation of Irish Sport, and GAA. They were the ones that were there today because there was a bit of a fiasco this summer with GA Go, the new pay-per-view service brought to us by uh, GA in conjunction with RTE. So RTE managed to get in the headlines every day this week. So they're down there this morning. And I suppose the consensus from the politicians is that it was a disaster this summer. We had one of them as an ex-Mayo footballer, actually, Alan Dillon. And I'll give him credit now, which is rare coming from a Galway man. But uh, he put it straight to Tony Ryan, who's the director general. Uh, that's their title in uh, GA as well. It's the same as RTE for the boss. He put it to him that it was a cartel, that they were running a cartel here. There were people, if they wanted to watch the matches, they had no choice, but they had to go and buy a GA subscription. And if you know the, I won't say the average, but a lot of GA supporters would be of an elder generation. Uh, they're not as au fait as we are with technology. They don't know how to watch matches on the phone, which is fine. They used to watch them in RTE. They look forward to it all summer. And the GA and RTE have messed up with that formula this year. And they got a bit of a grilling down there today. Matty McGrath, another man not afraid to have a go at anyone. He was pointing to the ordinary, ordinary GAA supporters, but also the volunteers and the workers. He talks about the people and he, you know, he got a little bit angry about it. He talks about the people that make the sandwiches, the people that wash the jerseys every week, because it's still an amateur organization, remember. And he says, these are the people that arrive and they, they do the gate every week. And all of a sudden last year, they found out that there is no gate anymore at GA Games because it's all uh, it's all prepaid that you arrive with your QR code. And that's a very big change for people. I was with someone last year. He got quite angry when we got to Pierce Stadium in Galway. He was there with a 20 euro note. 
and they wouldn't take it. And I would say, I'll do the QR code, I'll buy it. And he goes, no, I want to pay into the match. He goes, that's the way it always goes. And then he reminded me of that famous joke as well that we have in Galway about, you know, if you had a genie and if you just one wish, you know, what would you do? Would you wish for all the riches of the world? And he goes, no, no, no. He goes, I think I'd like to be able to do the gate the day of the Galway Mayo Connacht final. So that's the, the sort of uh, mystique and aura there is around a GA match when it comes to it. And what they did with this initiative is they've moved all that away. They've gone corporate. They've brought it to the stage where you have to log in, you have to get on to your smart TV, etc., and you have to watch it there. And they got a roast in there today. They got it from Maddie McGrath. They got it from Alan Dillon. They got it from Shane Castles. They got it from everyone. The same media committee, ironically, that were all day yesterday. They, they some of them found a bit of a boom to go again today. And the PAC are going tomorrow. It's another story. But um, just the GA go. I just I wonder what you guys think, folks. I'm, I'm saying you mightn't be the biggest GA supporters in the country, Sandra. I know you're from County Louds, where our great <laughs> Peter Fitzpatrick TD is from. A star of back yesterday. And Louise, you're obviously a proud dub. So did you have any did she have any impact? Is that any impact on you this summer, Diego? What do you think of it? Quick, quick ones now, because I know I know you're not mad into it. Louise, take it away. So someone just reminded me, um, because obviously, like you said, this was a huge controversy a couple of months ago when the high profile match was being put behind the paywalls on GAA Go. And I ran into someone there earlier and she said, Oh, are you covering GAO? GA go the committee today and I went no no I'm leaving that to Fergal and um, she was like Jesus I remember when that whole controversy kicked off she goes I just heard this South Dublin accent from around the corner going and I don't even understand GAA and she's like and I walked around the corner and it was you so <laughs> having absolutely no impact on my life and um, anything you just said there double dutch and um, I do think that perhaps there is a little bit of profiteering and 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 it did seem to be the big games that were moved behind the paywall and that annoys a lot of people but I think what the GAA said at the committee today was correct you know you can't broadcast every single GAA game I don't know how many there is in a season um but a, a lot I would assume yeah but I suppose they also added that it's it's not in our interest to do it so they're again talking to the commercial commercial end of things where they'd lose money if they did it. So they said that we're going to do it. Sandra, we leave the last word in GA to go. You're dying to get in. You're from, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're from County Loud. As I, as, is there many I'm just too happy on? to see Loud play in Croke Park. That's all that I'm I'm a rugby player. Big shout out you to are. my team, Swords Rugby Club. Um, I'm not a GAA player and I never was. I'm more of a rugby player, but uh yeah, I would just like to see Loud uh play uh in Crow Park and get Get somewhere um but yeah i wouldn't know much about gaa go and i'm not even going to pretend you know. <laughs> welcome okay. to the club well, for your um, welcome stuff. to the club <laughs> yeah let's hope they never go to rugby go so and you have to pay-per-view for all all the irish rugby games but you probably still have to have a sky sub to get most of the rest of them. yeah but we always try to end on a couple of funny notes folks so um we have two this week i think that are they're in contention myself and louise so sandra actually we'll make you the judge you tell us what you think is the funniest oh god um the first one that came out of the meeting i told you we'd be back to Tuberty. we couldn't leave it and it was a small little clip uh, towards the end of the meeting so we're three hours in at this stage and if we're going to actually watch the little clip here now ian our producer behind us is gonna is gonna let it go there so show us a little clip and i'll talk about it then afterwards please ian Going back before you got involved with oh, sure. RT, so we're, we're years ago. NK CMS for uh, 26 years before I worked for Cadbury's. Um, and before what Cadbury's. For Cadbury's. Sorry? What were you selling for Cadbury's? Cadbury's? Yeah. Chocolate. 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 Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chocolate. Thank Chocolate. you. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Soap, anyway. That's, well, that's soap. fine. Well, Thank you. Okay, folks, I hope that brought a giggle to your face as well. That was Brian Stanley, the chair, after nearly three hours in the committee room. Uh, he wanted to get behind what Uber agent Tony Kelly did before he was the super agent. And obviously, he told him he had a marketing background, he had a sales background, and that he went into how he used to work for Cadbury's. And I just think that's a classic line when Brian Stanley, kind of very drawl a bit, it just goes, oh, what did you sell in Cadbury's? And no, Kelly goes, chocolate. <laughs> so that's my moment of the week. You saw it there, and the, you probably heard it as well. The place erupted. It uh, broke the ice. It was like a bit of, bit of thunder on a tense, humid day. All of a sudden, everybody was allowed to laugh again, and we went off to lunch a little bit lighter on our feet. Uh, probably put Tuberty in a good mood as well as he came down and shook hands with all the TDs and a little smile and a thanks for the media as well. So that's the end of that Tubbs Gate for now, except we're going to get a, another funny moment here from Louise, I think. 
uh, totally untubs gate, but take totally it away. There again, gate it. And also an exclusive. So let that come into your <laughs> game, Sandra. So I got a text from a TD earlier going, did you hear about Timmy Dooley? Who I, I know Timmy won't mind me naming him here now. He is a Fianna Fáil senator. And someone texted me and they went, did you hear about Timmy Dooley's AirPods? And I went, no. So he lost his AirPods. There's a Fianna Fáil do earlier this week and apparently he lost his AirPods. So he sent an email to every single TD and senator in Leinster House earlier saying that he's lost his AirPods. He's been tracking them online and it looks like someone in Leinster House has picked them up. So apparently the TDs and senators were saying that he was going around like this all day trying to track his AirPods and find my AirPods. <laughs> Um, and Lynn Boylan, who's a Sinn Féin senator, um, saw the light side and all this. And she responded with the Liam Neeson uh, taken, the famous Liam Neeson line in Taken. And it's that shot of Liam Neeson on the phone up like this. And she goes, I will look for you. I will find you. Mm -hmm. um, now, thankfully, Timmy, I have since figured out, did find his AirPods. And they were they were rescued by someone, Fianna Fáil, HQ. <laughs> um, I was going to ask, actually. They were. No, they were rescued and they were found because um, he was apparently tracking them all around he could see that they went home with someone yesterday that they came back into the office and um, so oh my <laughs> well. who did they go home with <laughs> well, someone in Fianna Fáil HQ <laughs> it was the Fianna Fáil party last night so they're all they're all gathered together so the jackets and earphones and everything yeah, they just, they just fell out of the pocket it wasn't it wasn't anything it wasn't no. like, <laughs> i do love i do love both of those funny moments though but i'm going to go with louise because it's an exclusive oh. and it's ours and it's so, a murder it's mystery it's a mystery as well it's not just a comedy she's got mystery and intrigue and everything so i gotta put my game on the funnies next week okay <laughs> well guys thank you so much for tuning in again we again talk about ryan tuberty for the whole entire episode no doubt we will continue to talk about ryan tuberty because rte are back in front of the public accounts committee later this week and i'm sure this story will continue to rumble on for the summer we will have our calls for the door to be stood back up when they're on their recess to discuss this no doubt thank you so much for tuning in sandra thank you so much again for joining us we really appreciate it and we will talk to you all very very soon bye bye folks bye bye <laughs>